This is the Average Joe Strongman Show. Hey, y'all. I'm Lee. I'm Mike. This is the Average Joe Strongman Show. Uh, episode six. We are six episodes into this uh, project, endeavor, whatever we're going to call it. Um, and before we start tonight, I want to really express our most sincere appreciation to all of you who have watched uh, an episode thus far, who have liked uh, the videos on YouTube, who have subscribed to the Warpath Strength channel, where we're posting and hosting uh, this content. Uh, we are extremely grateful that you've taken the time to engage, so thank you very much. Um, also, please tell your friends. Uh, we're trying to grow this thing, and if you can share the links to the episodes, that'd be most appreciated. Um, our mission, as you know, is to help grow the sport of amateur strongman in the United States. So, again, thank you very much. Lee, you want to add anything? No, couldn't have said it better. Uh, like and share. Like, like Mike said, you know, we're trying to grow the sport. Uh, give you some valid information that will help you become a better strongman athlete or strongwoman athlete. So, yeah, promote it, share it, like it. You know, we're in this for you. This is why we do it. So, yes, sir. Uh, special right. episode tonight. We've got our first non-strongman guest, but I think it's a topic of conversation that uh, whether you're – whatever kind of strength athlete you are, uh, you'll appreciate this. We've got Mr. Steve Welch, uh, who is a – let me rattle this off. He's a power lifter. Uh, he's been a state, national, and world champion in various federations. Uh, certified strength conditioning coach, uh, gym owner. He owns Max Effort uh, Strength Conditioning down in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, he's a father. He is a U.S. Marine Corps veteran. Um, all around good dude. Uh, but the reason we've got him on tonight is he is the founder, the president of Skull Smash Ammonia. So we're going to have a really good conversation with Steve tonight. Here we go. Here we go, bring them on. There he is, the man, the myth, the legend, Steve Walsh. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Thanks for being here. So we're going to dive right into it. I'm we're sorry. Dive right ahead. into it, Steve. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was like, I really like how you guys made sure that everybody knew that I was the first non-strong guy that you have on your show. <laughs> no, I'll work, hey. I'll work on it. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> you are a strong, you're a strong yeah, fucker, man. No, no, no. Don't, don't twist my words. Way, way to go, Mike. You're the way first non-strong man <laughs> athlete. But I'm really uh, appreciate busted. No, I'm busted. Luckily for you, I, I, agree. I agree. I am probably the weakest guy you guys have had. Oh, you're Let not a go. chance. You guys way to go, Mike. Way to go! I'll, 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 re I'll record that first first uh, guest insult, Mike. Episode six, <laughs> wrote it down. Got it. Fantastic. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna get right into. It. So, Steve, uh, how long you been in powerlifting, and and what got you interested in competing? Oh man, great question. Um, I I've been doing the power lifts probably since I've been lifting. So I took it up. I, I've been competing. If I if I do a competition in twenty twenty one, which I'm hoping and looking to do it will be my 18th consecutive year of competing in powerlifting having never missed a year good for you man um, so I, awesome. I don't know too many people who can say that so i mean more along the lines to my coaching job my other full-time job is that maybe you know clients ought to listen to me because uh, <laughs> e even as a almost 47 year old lifetime drug-free guy I've, I've been able to maintain doing it for 18 years without ever having to miss due to major injuries so 18 years in the actual sports side of it and you know you know powerlifting and and what what not for other sports what got me into it um oddly enough was um i'd always i worked in a gym before i i bought a gym so i've always gravitated towards lifting and my degrees in exercise physiology so i had to study the sports side of it all and i was playing rugby at the time and so you know in the position i played being bigger and stronger certainly helped um I was actually leaning towards Olympic lifting and I wanted to kind of start doing some competitions in the YMCA that I worked out or worked at just to build some camaraderie amongst the guys in the gym. Cause you guys have been to commercial gyms. It's like, it's like going to hell for guys like us. And, uh, <laughs> you, got, you, got, you got a bunch, of, you got a bunch yeah, of guys not talking, doing their own thing. So I'm like, right. let's see if I can get some camaraderie going. And so 
I thought Olympic, honestly, honest to God, and I love powerlifting. Olympic lifting just looks cooler. Um, so I was gravitating towards that, but then I was like, you know, you need special bars. Nobody does, yeah. but at least everybody bench presses. So yeah. I'll build this foundation off of that that everybody benches, and I'll just teach them to squat and deadlift. And so just by default, from trying to turn it into a fraternal thing to build some camaraderie amongst the guys in the weight room at the YMCA I worked at, I took up powerlifting because you don't really need any special equipment that you didn't already have. And and once I kind of got my my hooks into it or it got its hooks into me, it just kind of took over. And to the point where I was like, you know what, I'm never going to play a national level of rugby because I was 26 years old, my rookie season. And I, I'm never going to play a world level rugby. And I'm never going to. You know, so but with powerlifting, if I if I take the time and I learn it and I put the years in, maybe I can. And so it just became my thing. And then. I never really looked back. I've never stopped. That's cool. Uh, well, we were talking recently, and you mentioned that uh, your gym down in St. Louis, Max Effort, right? Yeah. Um, you've you've got some strongman equipment. You've brought some stuff in. What do you uh, What do you have down there, and what prompted you to bring that in? Um, well, I okay. What, what got me going on strongman is I've, once again, it, spectator wise, it's just so much. Powerlifting is a boring sport to watch if you don't know anything about powerlifting. It just is. Yeah. Um, and I love it, and I do it, and I'll continue to do it. Strongman, man, who doesn't know Bill Kazmaier? You know, who, who right. didn't grow up watching it? I mean, so so Strongman, yeah. I mean, it's it's in the freaking name. It's the strongest guys on the planet. So I've always had an appreciation for it. I love the motion, the movement. Um, what got me going on it was uh, I did – I went to a seminar in St. Louis. I'm glad I did it because soon after he died um, with Dr. Fred Hatfield and Josh Bryan. Yeah. And they put it on for Dr. free. Dr. Squat. Yeah, and uh, you know, and I mean, God, if you, uh, you know, if you've been around this this industry for more than five minutes, you you've heard of him. He's yeah. authored more books on the on the topics. One of the lightest guys to squat a thousand pounds back in the day. Well, anyway, so him and Josh are just a wealth of information, and they put this thing on for free, and they were really engaging and talking and talking and talking. And uh, I was contributing a lot to the conversations because why go if you're not going to? And at the end of it all, I had a little one on one time with with uh, with Fred, and he said that. You know, even though he was most known for his powerlifting and he did everything from gymnastics to Olympic lifting to strongman, that knowing what he knows now and in the wisest phase of his life and, and, and sitting back looking on a, a career of not only competing and participating in all the strength athletics and piling games on, but to, to, to be a true academic, that if he could go back, he would have spent more time in strongman and he considered it the ultimate display of strength <laughs> athleticism. And I, I couldn't imagine hearing a more profound, um, a, a absolute statement by a more qualified person. So I'm like, yeah. I got to get some of this shit in my life. Yeah. And at the same well, time, uh, and he's vice president of Skull Smash, he's a young guy, very talented, um, got his master's degree in kinesiology, and he works for me both as a coach and making Skull Smash. Um, his name's Ben Model. He just competed in his first uh uh u.s strong man up in minneapolis drug free oh, cool. two, drug free 220 first time out of the gate brand new father uh, living on a couple hours of sleep uh sixth place <laughs> sixth place out of 33 guys drug free yeah uh, 800 pound deadlift um he's just savage and, and he's good at powerlifting but it's strong man is is his thing and um and so he's been a tremendous influence like teaching us all the proper way of doing kegs and stones and so it's just it's it's the fastest growing component of my gym. And I think you hit the nail on the head with the word athleticism. We talked recently, Steve, when we were on the phone, and you mentioned that you've thought about or maybe you've started to incorporate some strongman into your training again mm -hmm. because of the level of athleticism required to do the sport. Like not taking anything away from a power lifter, squat bench, deadlift, but it's those three yeah. lifts. That's it, right? Yeah. We're not just lifting weight as strongman competitors, we're we're moving with it. Yeah, right? absolutely. And multiple events. I mean, very rarely do you go to a strongman event and it's just three three events. I mean, you could have as many as nine in a day or whatever. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, oh, without a doubt. I mean, I, I'll never, never talk shit on the efficacy of powerlifting. Absolute strength is, is absolutely the strongest thing you can do, but it is a very fixed thing. I mean, very rarely in other sports or life do you find a completely symmetrically easily loaded bar with, with, the design of the diameter of the bar to be to fit the lumen of your hand and calibrated plates and everything cushy. Most of the times you're you're demonstrating ability in adverse situations, and I think nothing matches that like strongman. Yeah, cool. I agree. Yeah, for sure. Um, so 
Have you ever competed in a strongman competition? I have not. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I keep getting prodded by the, the young guys in the gym. <laughs> the and and I, don't, I, don't wanna, I don't wanna say that I won't because I've competed in the Highland. I've, I've thought about starting this thing. I don't know what I call it, but I'll come up with some cool name for it. Um, and it'd be sort of like a perpetual plaque that I keep for people. But anybody that's competed in strongman, Highland Games and powerlifting, and I'll put their, you know, I'll put their name on it and kind of kiss. Not many people can say they've done that. And I've done Highland Games. I did that for a year and I didn't get real good at it, but I, I started it when I was 40. I wanted to be a rookie at something. So I did a year of Highland Games and, uh, and I've done powerlifting and I think I'll try strongman sometime, but you know, I'm, I'm five foot nine on a good day. So, uh, <laughs> right. I'm, I'm, I'm almost 47 years old. I mean, not, not to say that I would, I'll push away from a challenge, but it's not yeah. the most conducive build to, to high level strongman. So, you know, I'll knock around at some local meets. I got a good friend that has a gym nearby, JD's gym, and yeah. they're, they're strongman. And my son, my son did a strongman competition when he was just in May, a, a couple weeks before his 11th birthday, and won. I don't know if you saw my That's video. Awesome. That's yeah, awesome. So he did. He did JD's. Um, JD's uh, thing. 200, 300 guys. Yeah, won. yeah, yeah. So, wow. Uh, my, so my son's got one under his belt. So, uh, so we'll see. But so I would like say I like to, Yeah, but yeah. I, I haven't yet. Oh, he did. He did the frame deadlift. Um, they put a you know a couple hundred pound tire on a frame. He only had one workout um, to get ready for this because you know we don't have those uh, those implements at my gym. Yeah. And, uh, he did uh, thirty eight reps in a minute. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. He weighed he weighed seventy five pounds. Good for him. Oh yeah. Tell him to keep it up. That's awesome. Oh no. He, yeah. He for sure. Gym. Yeah, we were in the gym last night. My daughter's a little savage too, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. runs the family. I love it. Yeah, but yeah, I'll I'll awesome. do one. I just gotta you know I gotta uh, you know pick a good one for me. Make sure it's some events that I you know could could get ready for, and then you know truthfully and, and not, to, not not to be uh, overly cautious to the point I mean to the point where I couldn't be a good athlete, but you know it, it, um, self preservation at this age. Sure. It's starting to become a, a real thing. Well, I was going to wait till the end to bring this up, but I mean, now that we're talking about it, I'm not saying, but I'm just saying on October 2nd up in Wheaton, Illinois, <laughs> there's a competition that Skull there Smash is. has generously agreed to uh, sponsor. So, uh, you know, we got some events going on up there, Steve, yeah. if you're uh, so inclined. Yeah, but. it was with it was going to be with products, not with my blood and, and, <laughs> and a nice day in your urgent care. Yeah, yeah but no, uh, yeah, I'll yeah, let I'd everybody know to. right now. Uh, October 2nd, Saturday, October 2nd uh, at uh, Midwest Strength and Performance in Wheaton, Illinois. Uh, I'll be promoting the uh, Warpath Strength Skull Smash Challenge. It's gonna be so if, you, if you're looking for a competition, uh, come on up. We got a badass T-shirt design. Uh, Steve may or may not be there, but uh, I'm gonna think- try. Absolutely. So, getting to the heart of the matter now. Here comes sure. the, the the real critical question. So, Steve, what inspired you to start Skull Smash back in uh, 2015? Right. Yeah, e- easy. A um, uh, couple things happened at the same time. Um, I started thinking, okay, you know. The way I've made my gym, it's not open to the general public. I'm very selective of members uh, on on character, not ability, and as such, it's not a big money maker. You know, it's a it's a tough living being a small gym owner that doesn't want the general public. Um, sure. And and so I'll start to think, you know, if I'm going to continue to do this, you know, service isn't going to be my future. It's not going to be my only thing. I, you know, you're limited on how much of your time you can sell because every man's afforded the same amount. And people don't pay strength and conditioning coaches three, four hundred dollars an hour. You just don't. If you do, you're stupid. Um, uh, so I was thinking I need to have some kind of a product thing as part of my future and had no idea what it would be. So that started churning in my brain. Um, at the same time, I one day I bought uh, two bottles of nose torque off of Amazon because that's all there was. Ever since I've, I've right. been for a minute, yep. poppers and nose torque, and that's all there was. And I've always hated nose torque. Hated it, hated it, hated it. It's too, you know, it's too strong when you first get it. It's liquid, it's cheap, it's generic. Uh, a week later, you might have to jam your nose in a bottle to even get anything out of it. Yeah. And, you know, all the problems, if you've ever been around nose torque, you know. Okay. So I ordered two bottles off Amazon. They come in the mail. I put them out by the chalk box. First day, they both leak into my chalk box, ruin all the chalk. I was having a typical shitty gym owner day anyway. Kicked the chalk box over, pissed off, had to take it out. Why is this the only thing that exists? I'm yeah, going to right. nah. and, right. and And then it just wouldn't go away. I don't have a chemistry background. I don't have a business background. I don't have a mark. All these things that I've kind of gotten known to be good at, 
It's just because I'm stubborn and because I can't sing and dance and I'm not a doctor. I just won't go away. So I'm like, yeah, but man, there's a lot to be said for having that giddy up and, and you know, yeah, the Thomas Edison. Sure. I mean, good for you, man. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, this is the only thing that's existed for probably 20, 30 years and it yeah. sucks. So everything that, that I didn't like about it, the liquid, the the hyper potency, which meatheads like to say, oh, you got to be stronger. No, if ammonia is too strong, that it makes you gag and lose your ability to focus and have a finishing return. Ammonia can be too strong. You know, you know, so so I was like, it's too strong and it dies. So everything that, about it that I didn't like, I was hell bent on figuring out a way to make a different product. So I went to a solid formula using ammonium base instead of an ammonia base. I wanted optimal potency. If you've ever seen anybody use a no bottle of nose torque, they start out here because you just don't yeah. know when the hell it's going to bite. I wanted yeah. to be biting so the athlete knew right where to go so you didn't waste 30 seconds of your minute on the platform to know how to get your ammonia jack. Um, so I, yeah. desi I designed it to be what nose torque wasn't. And I had every intention and still do to take them completely over. And then, and so I set the, I set the industry standard. And then from there, I, I started on the, uh, scented editions. Yeah. yeah. Speaking yeah. of which, I'll oh, go ahead, Lee. Um, I was just, I was just going to say it was funny cause, and I might get a chance to mention this to you, but when I was, we did, we do our strongman training on Wednesday nights. I was at the gym last night with the crew and, uh, we were over in the powerlifting stud and the guys were doing some reverse hypers. And I happened to look down and I saw a bottle of Skull Smash there. That bottle had been there for so long and they were still using it. The label was worn off of it. I right? love that. I could still see the the outline of the Skull Smash, the logo. Mm -hmm. You could see where it kind of said Skull Smash on the side, but the label was basically worn off and it was still sitting there. Guys were still using it. So That's awesome. Yeah, just a good testament to the product for sure. When, uh, when, every now and then when I see guys I know and have been customers for a long time and have been very loyal, like if they, they post one of those old bottles, like the original label and stuff like that, I tell them if they mail it back to me, I'll I'll refill it and send it back to them. That's oh, awesome. Cool, I, just wanted, I just wanted to see that that's bottle cool. again. Sure, I've yeah. literally made every bottle I've sniffed. So just to get it back and to have it for a minute and I'll take a picture of it. If yeah. the cap's busted up, I'll put a new cap on it and I'll refill it with a new and send it back to them. Yeah, I'll pass that on. That'd be great. Yeah, because yeah. like I said, I saw it last night when I was in there. It was interesting, but yeah, yeah for and sure. Speaking yeah. of the caps, I love you came out now with the flip cap. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice little touch. Uh, yeah. Got me going on that was uh, it's starting to get a little bit of a, a growing interest from the hockey community. And I played uh, hockey once uh, upon a time, and it's real damn yeah. hard to take a lid off with a glove on. But you can flip, you can flip a... <laughs> You know, flip a flip a lid. So the, yeah. the flip top cap doesn't give as strong of a hit, but a lot of people don't. So, um, oh, indeed. but uh, but it, it will work, and you always have the option to still unscrew it like a regular cap. So it, sure. for for a few sure. extra cents, it just gives you another option. Yep. Yeah. Well, you just mentioned something though. Uh, we were talking about you know the guys that you know take that hit, and, and we talked recently, Steve. You know, my understanding of when you you know pop that cap when you take that hit of ammonia. You need to hit it and go because yeah. I'll see people take a hit and they'll wait 30 seconds, a minute. They'll take forever. And they've lost, from my perspective, all the benefit of, of taking that hit. You want to go within like five to 10 seconds. For me, if I'm hitting a max effort lift, it's like pop it, go, boom. Like don't wait. So can you talk a little bit about like how does the ammonia inhalant work? How do your ammonia inhalants work? Yeah, you're and you're 100% right. Now, well, I'll, st I'll, start, I'll, I'll, Tell start, my wife. I'll start at the end of the maze. Part, part of the part of the use of ammonia for a lot of people, I'd say, is ritualistic. Like when you look at a, a baseball player, you know, every, after every hit swing, they step out and redo their gloves. It's not necessary. It's part of that athletic ritual. So ammonia use has become that too, and 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 it and that's valuable. The the um, sure. that ritualistic the psychology know, of it. Yeah. So so there is that, but the the way ammonia works, um, you're 100 percent right to do it too soon Again, before your event. My wife. It's completely, completely um, uh, misuse of it. So um, it's the last. I, I always tell people the way I think of hitting the ammonia is it's like uh, the firing pin hitting the primer. It's fucking time to go. Yeah. Okay. So um, when you hit your ammonia, you better be on your way to the bar. You shouldn't have to latch your belt. You shouldn't have to pull your wrist wraps tight. You shouldn't have to chalk your hands. Um, if your girlfriend smacks your back, whatever that you do. All that's done, then the ammonia goes in, and then you're on that bar or at that stone or whatever as fast as possible. Okay, um, it's a it's short it's a short lived thing, and so how it works, um, 
I won't get too long winded with this because hey, nobody cares, and B, it's not a, a twenty. Well, no, but you know what? I mean, we talked about it. It, it triggers it, that uh, involuntary breathing response. It does, right? yeah. So it, it, it basically, in a, in a simple way of thinking about it, is which it's actually really simple. Um, uh, is it does it, it basically starts you hyperventilating, so it, it increases oxygen flow. So there is that, and that's advantageous. Um, but the and it's not the smell of ammonia. That's why the scents work because those scents also create a different. Um, psychological aspect on, on on the mood too but the pungency of the ammonia the strength of the ammonia the agitating side that part of the brain that processes olfaction like that is one of the most primitive i mean where it's basically the caveman part of the brain like you have right. never had to learn to Fight disregard you never had to learn to disregard the smell of feces or the roses smell good you know these are hard sort of hardwired into us to a point um so when you smell that really really harsh thing that snaps your head back and it's like a chemical smack in the face it elicits that flight or fight, flight or fight or flight response, yep, right. and that's uh, that's precious. So as soon as you hit that, go do the damn yeah. thing. Yeah, so that's yep. sort of the gist of it. Um, speaking of primal, I do have a bottle of Blood Eagle, your newest yeah. scent. So it is brand best. new. I have not opened it. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a hit of this, and then we're gonna go to break because I'm gonna need a moment to recover. Okay. Um, <laughs> but, but I'm not going cover. to break. See it though, yeah, oh, nice. but before we do, can you explain what inspired this one? Um, you guys, strongman community. So, okay, um, cool. I mean, that, that's part of it, and you know, and uh, the, the, the alcohol thing. So, when, when I make sense, then there are some exceptions that I do for people. Um, the I'm not just arbitrarily picking things, the sense that I apply to ammonia. A, I've had to learn how to make them stable in ammonia because ammonia changes things. Yeah. Um, uh, like people have asked me to do a coffee one. I made a call. I tried with coffee one time, and it just smelled like a burnt turd. Um, but I, but I got, a, but I got. A no number. one needs that. No, I mean, there's probably a small niche out there. For one burnt turd. Yeah, there's no, no. I've got there's a one fetish for everything. Big, uh, a la coffee, right. but I'm going I'm to work on another approach. But so I picked these scents based on what they do to mood. But um, so I, the first one I ever made, the first scented ammonia ever, was the American whiskey scent, which is still one of the strongest, most popular ones I have. So I just wanted to keep going with the liquor thing and the Viking mentality amongst strength athletes, especially um, uh, strong men is just, you know, it's just cool. It's fun. Yeah. Vikings were awesome in the art and the culture and the beards. So I'm like, man, there's just so much Viking stuff and Nordic appreciation and the strength yeah. community. I'm going to make a mead scented one. And so that's, first I had, to, I, had ass, to, I had to learn what the hell mead was. Then I had to start doing my, my uh, my research on Viking thing of come up with a name Blood Eagle. Like a lot of my stuff has two names: Skull Smash, Brain Grenade, Bad right. Aspect, Blood Eagle, and it's Savage. Blood Eagle was a horrible way to die, and uh, so I just wanted to do it to have something that was a little bit more definitely directed towards strongman guys, yeah. guys that dig the Viking culture, and uh, and I just thought it'd be great finding the little Thor's hammers and putting them on there. And, awesome. yeah. yeah, so yeah. Change right. the skull. Yeah, that was it. Well, That's here nice. we go. It's coming off. All right, let's see it. I hope I didn't right. send a bad one. Let's get ready to go to break here. All right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't, don't. Oh! <laughs> Woo! Oh, burn the ships, man. Yeah. You like it? Oh, I do. Actually, yeah, that's good. You get the meat in it? it? Oh, I do. I got my eyes are watering. So that's it's good. Viking funeral ship oh. on, my, on my tattoo right there, actually. Woo! Yeah. Well done, sir. You like it? Well, I do. You yeah, I do. The, you smell the honey in the meat? Oh, yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah, that's awesome. Glad you like it. We'll get some now, guys. All right. All right, let's take a two-minute break. All right, I'm going to take a two-minute break so Mike go change his underwear, and then we'll be back. Oh. <laughs>
And we're back. All so, right. Steve, one of the things I wanted to ask um, while Mike was out changing his underwear was, uh, <laughs> so I think back to, and you and I are both veterans, so you can remember back to the, you know, back in the day, right? So I can remember stealing all the ammonia inhalants from the medics and, you know, all the many nights of sleep deprivation, right? I used to steal boxes of ammonia inhalants and keep them in my rucksack just for those long nights where it's like, okay, Staying away on guard duty, right? Just to, just to, you know, to keep you awake for ten more minutes, right? Yeah. Um. So one of the things that, like a lot of the people that I train that use ammonia, is and the guys don't use it a lot, like in, on a standard training day. But if they're going for a big lift or trying to hit a one rep max, you know, I tell them that you know, hit the skull smash, hit the ammonia to clear your head, get you, get out of your own head. Right, because yep. you're overthinking the lift. You're, you know, you're worried about what your form. It's like you've done this long enough. You need to clear your head and pick the shit up. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So that's where I see. I mean, is that something that you see as well? I mean, I know we talked about, um, you know, when the, to use it. Hit it. Yeah, when to use it. You know, hit it and go. Don't hit it and walk around and go to the bathroom and change your underwear like Mike just did. And then go do your lift. Yeah. Right. It's hit it and go. Like yep. a lot of the competitors, even at competitions, you know, they'll come up. Like strap it in for a deadlift. I'm like, give me your bottle, right? Strap in, and then I'll wave it under your nose. Yeah, and then lift, right? So, what I mean, what do you think about that? Is that yeah, no, I, I, for... I think that's one of the many the many functions of of, of ammonia. Uh, I mean, and it works physiologically, but also symbolically because it's the last thing you do before you go. So that's a pretty important step in the equation. Is that it should help clear your mind? A if you use, here's the thing, and this is a helpful tip to all you people out there that are using ammonia wrong. If it doesn't suck, you're not doing it right. Okay, <laughs> it's it's like marriage. Okay, <laughs> okay. Like, you know. So okay. um, there you go. Yeah, if it's out of here and it's just like, ooh, ooh, and you're going. I mean, you're using it for the ritualistic side. If that helps you, great. And I'm really glad you're using mine. But ammonia should snap your head back. And yeah. with that, that that flight or flight, that caveman thing. I mean, you really should be thinking. You know, as somebody that did serve and you two is like, I can't stand it really in this. And I know nobody means it in a disrespectful way, so I don't get it. You're not going to war, but it, it is an, you know, you're lifting a weight. It's a sport that you pay 30, you know, 50 bucks to go do. And you're going to get a little shiny metal that costs seven bucks. It's not combat. You're not in a fucking, right. you know, Afghanistan. So, yeah. but it is that same mindset that we elicit that we put here. Here's the thing about lifting. And you, I don't have to tell this to you guys or anybody that's lifting. We put so much gravity of our real lives on our sports and expression. Nobody's yeah. doing this for the sport. It's because something about all of us makes us that if we didn't have this outlet to express strength and to be with like-minded people, uh, you know, we, we wouldn't be healthy, normal men. This is right. what we need. You know, So it is that warrior-like mentality. And if you don't have good focus, if you're cognitively thinking of how to perform your lift or your event, you're already going to lose because you can't process information like that. Cognitive processes are way slower than physical process. That's why you train, so that you don't have to fucking think about it. And so the ammonia should definitely be that last reminder that if you're thinking and you're not just on that, and that's what the level of, that's what the definition of mastery is, is to being able to do something efficiently without conscious thought. And right. so that is yep, exactly, exactly what ammonia does to me, is it goes, exactly. it's like, dude, it's time you put in years for this next four seconds, years. Yep. For the next two pounds that you're going to lift um and that that's what that reminder is is that there's nothing else in the world that matters other than that at that time and for for me that's kind of what the ammonia does that's that symbolic last thing and if you hit it hard so it just clears your brain makes you pissed off makes you agitated makes you focused get you breathing heavy and you go do the damn thing well, if, if it's not lighting up your nasal passages, setting them on fire, and making your eyes water like mine did for about a minute after I hit that blood eagle, yeah, yeah it, it's not right. Uh, yeah. And my mind is definitely much more clear because Leah's referenced me changing my underwear four times in the last uh, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to count that otherwise. Yeah. Um, so how many different varieties do you have now? Is it like at least, at least a dozen maybe? Oh, yeah, um, prob probably. I, I, don't, I don't even know the the running count and then you know that and what i have that's available to the public and what i make yeah another reason to come visit my gym because you'll you'll see additions that don't even exist out in the world like my own private bottle that i that i'm using right now is nice. something completely different but uh oh man yeah you know, i've got you know i got the, 
plain and three, you know, four different versions of that. Yep. Um, I've got American whiskey, Irish whiskey, cold cocked, the fuego, which is a mint scent fuego, which is a hot cinnamon. Yeah. I've got uh, uh, double barrel, uh, which is the day. I mean, that's insane. Like, it's not even for normal people. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, the mon- the monster, which is a citrus blended scent, which is also that's the one pound monster. Oh, the that's silver a, bullet. The silver bullet's a lemon is is a, a subtle lemon, and okay. it's really really good. And that goes well. That that's a lot like what they put in regular poppers. Um, okay, find a little bit more lemon, and and because it's a metal bottle, a it can take a beating for the guys that like to throw their bottles down. Yeah. Um, it also stays strong longer because. Moisture doesn't permeate through metal like it does plastic. So you're, yeah. you know, if you take good care of your silver bullet, even though it's an $18 bottle because it's aluminum, not plastic, yeah. that thing, that thing's a keeper, man. Oh, um, that's that's, that's a that's a lemon. Um, the Bush Ranger, the Australian, the the version I made for the Australian um, customers uh, that allow me to sell a certain amount of them in the U.S. Yeah. Uh, that's a really cool scent. I like it a lot. It doesn't sound badass, but I'm t- it's a blend of things that I that I worked on with his input going like what is when you know when i think of australia i think of shrimp on a barbie and fosters and nothing could be more yeah, right. Australian than that so i'm like what is australian what smells over there and they he told me about eucalyptus being really big and it's and everything and it grows yeah. everywhere so i made a blend with like bay rum and 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 eucalyptus and rum and different things that are uniquely and it's about four huh. things that went into it and so bush ranger is awesome it's a cool product um i got all those and and then uh there's a smoke one too right yeah, that uh, the the black label is black a really really popular one. I, I wanted to make something I said would smell like hell. Um, so it's, <laughs> it's smoky, it's smoky and hot and spicy, and it's awesome, and it stays strong for a long time. Sounds like Lee's bathroom. There That's you right. Go. There you go. After, after That's enchiladas. Right. That's uh, right. Yeah, I'm working on one for girls who powerlift right now. A uh, uh, scent for them. I sent Ivy a couple of. Uh, prototypes to kick around with her people and give me some feedback on. So yeah, there's there's a bunch of them. Well, I was going to ask you, what inspires you to make a new scent? Is it kind of like what don't I have that I'd like to have? Do you get like ideas from people, or do people? Yeah, I, I'll yeah, think no. I ask for it, right? You know, it's staying it's staying ahead. You know, of uh, in, in the industry. Like first of all, I, I I think of things and then study them. Different scents that have certain mood eliciting effects on people, plus just what what might be something that people want. And so like when I came out with the Formula 420, the weed scented one, that took a minute, man. That's the most expensive thing I make because yep. I actually use laboratories to extract terpenes from the marijuana plant that have no drug in it so that I can legally sell it state by right. state. But it's the exact chemicals that make weed smell like weed. And then I have to blend them into different things. And I make all kinds of little different solutions where I use yeah. I use parts of hop, hops plants, which are a first cousin. I use some little bits of pine. I use little bits of things that of, of smoke so that when it all settles into the ammonia, that it actually, when you open your bottle, it actually smells like weed. But that pungency of weed complements. So it seems counterintuitive, like it did to me too, that weed is like very calming, you know. And sure. it's, but it's the drug yeah. that does that, not the scent. Yeah, so right. The, scent, the yep. scent is very invigorating. And uh, and so and, and, and it drives the ammonia like a freaking ice pick to your eye. So you can form- swear. It's okay. The, for, the, the the kids keep looking at me sideways. When yeah. I, um, the uh, the four, I'm gonna hear about this, and I'm gonna tell you said the f word like 17 yeah. times. So here's fucking one more. Um, <laughs> so uh, so the the, for, the formula 420 is I'm I'm so proud of that one because uh, I I kind of really went out on a limb on that, and I, yeah. I invested a lot into it, and uh, I love it. I absolutely Dude, love it. So that it's that awesome. So what, what gets me thinking about it is going, what's going on in the culture? Um, I don't want my competitors to get ahead of me, and they're not. They're, they're, they're all little copycats taking my shit. And I understand that's just retail, but they're following sure. me, not the other way around. And so, right. um, uh, yeah, that, that's kind of it is what will work, what do people want, and what's kind of yeah. cool and what's kind of cool in the culture now. Now, can I make that work with ammonia? Because believe me, yeah. for everything I've made, I've turned down. Like, you know, um, people have asked me to make, like, can you make a pizza scented one? And uh, they're like, no, that's stupid. I can't. And it wouldn't work anyway. And um, one that I, when I've been asked for by um, somebody I'm trying to, trying to do a collab with, I hope I can, is, like, and I think it'd be a great idea as from veterans, gunmetal scent. Yeah. I mean, so I'm working really, really hard on yeah. that. But to do that, you know, that, that, that scent is highly sulfuric. 
And mm. so to, to make it work right, I would have to put things that are toxic in the ammonia. And believe it or not, even though I know we're smelling a noxious chemical, I would never ever knowingly put anything out that could potentially harm an athlete. Sure. So, yeah. so I'm not going to start putting carbon-based things and sulfur and ammonia because that's strong. I mean, it could hurt somebody. Yeah. So still trying to figure out how to, how to a, a, a make a gunmetal type thing and have it work and have it be safe. And I've learned the coloration, which is not, believe me, it's not as easy as it sounds. I've, I've, in my personal bottle that I'm using in my gym, it's got a really awesome gunmetal color to the ammonia. But I still haven't figured out how to make the smell enough to be authentic. So, and I'll never put something half-ass out. You guys know that. Yeah, for so, sure. Um, so I'm working, working on that. And uh, I, I shouldn't say this because my my competitors will probably jump on it if they hear it. But they'll still never do it as good as me. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna work on a uh, an actual um, hoppy beer scent one. And I've already oh, made yeah. one, one. One of my guys in my huge. gym. One of the guys in my huge. gym work, works for Anheuser Busch. You know, the biggest brewery in the world. And, oh, yeah. uh, and I made him a, uh, a prototype of it, and and he and he digs it a lot, and it's and it stayed solid. So I'm gonna start making some tweaks on that and see what cool. I can do with that. Well, I can attest to the potency of the form of the 420. We tried that over the weekend, and man, did you like it? Oh, I loved it. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. And if you do make a pizza flavor one, please make sure it's sausage because Lee loves sausage. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> I was I was more thinking Steve like bourbon and cordite, right? So. Maybe something along those lines, right? There you go. There you go. You, that's one thing, you know, the vets, you can always remember the smell of cordite, right? And CLP. Uh, and CLP. And CLP. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I just put a bottle of CLP in ammonia and see what happens. Like, oh, you did? No, no. I mean, I should. And just like, oh, you know, yeah, you for sure. Up with a waiver. Listen, hey, you remember, yep. remember when they gave you your atropine kit and you had to sign a waiver that you wouldn't see the government if you became a mutant for fighting the country for $900 a month? going to come with that same way over here that's yeah. right hey, you, you Love must it. have been asking for clp gunmetal smelling shit here's a bunch of toxic stuff in a bottle here sign this waiver that's right <laughs> yeah yeah give me two, give me two. yeah sign nice. me up. yeah Love it. Yeah, that's awesome yeah so uh, out of all your flavors steve is there one that's your favorite i know you said you got a private bottle you just use yourself but I mean, of all the brands that are out there in distribution now for the public what's your favorite one of oh, all? that's a that's a great question see here here I'm probably the the worst person to ask that based on the criteria that you're probably searching for yeah. because what makes something my favorite because I make these and I know what goes on behind sure. the scenes. Usually, what makes something my favorite is how hard it took me to get it the way I wanted it. Yeah. So, so, oh, okay. so, so right cool. now, I'd say the two things that have been the hardest to make and to have be what I wanted them to be that took the most renditions. Where I'm like, damn, am I just going to need to quit? You know, and and um is formula 420 which mm. really really kind of like it took a lot for me to take the high road or as much of a high road as i did when when the when the guys at absurdity and jumped on and made a version of it and, and really copied after my stuff because i've really put a lot into that but uh formula 420 and that black label was uh i don't want to say it was hard to make um there was it wasn't it wasn't difficult to get the the everything to jive but to find what things to put in it to make it smell like hell when i when i when I yeah. manifest that in my head, that that took a lot of tries. And when I got it, I'm like, and and then how people received it, I'm like, well, I, I like it, but you have to like it. And so I went with it. Yeah. And, and, and so that's what makes something um, really, really my favorite thing. I'm really proud of this Blood Eagle because of the design component to it. Um, being able to make mead smell like mead. There's no meat, you know, the, I don't just buy like a bottle of mead. I have to create this stuff out of a bunch yeah. of other things. Um, to get that yeah. stable, I'm really proud of that. But the one that I use when I compete, I just take a plain old bottle of Blue Skull Smash, and I never bring it home with me. I, I think of them as business cards. I yeah, take, nice. I take, a, bo that's I take cool. a bottle and I just leave it at the meat. Yeah, yeah. that's perfect. That's cool. Um, yeah, so you just kind of referenced this. What are some of the risks of using ammonia? Uh, is it possible to overdo it? Oh well, yeah, I mean, like you know, you can overdo water. Um, uh, if, if, yeah. if, if you sit, if you sit and use it stupidly, yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, it would hurt you. Uh, it, it, all the research that's been done over the decades and decades and decades, nobody's ever been able to say that there's any for for healthy users using it as directed. You know, you always got to because of lawyers, you got to put that shit out there. You know, your right. your show started with a disclaimer. All we're doing three meatheads talking <laughs> and, and right. disclaimer because of lawyers. Right. My lawyer, well, my lawyer yeah. knows I don't like him because he's a lawyer. Yep. Uh, like I will never <laughs> like you. I don't like your profession. I need you. I don't want you. Um, but uh, uh, yeah. kind of like marriage. Um, yep. so, uh, 
<laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, the, 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 the negative sides to them, I would say, if, if a person's got uh, respiratory issues, if you yeah. have several broken noses or you have um, uh, deviated septums, if you have sinusitis, if you have asthma, you know, um, I, and I mean it, I don't put it on there just because of the lawyers. I tell people, if you don't know, if you can't say 100 percent, hell yes, I'm good to go with this, ask your doctor. Or ask yeah, whomever yeah. you whomever you talk to to make your decisions on the ergonomic aids and and things that you'll add into your life for silly shit like lifting weights and stones. Yeah. But but there's for healthy users using it as directed, not huffing it in a brown paper bag and stuff like that all day. Yeah. Um, no, I mean put it this way: I don't know a, a soul on the planet that smelled more ammonia than me. Okay. I mean, I'm, it's Steve yeah. Skull Smash here, sure. um, and, I, and I can still complete full sentences. Yeah, you know. Fair and so, um, you know, um, all my brains, all, all seven of my brain cells are still firing. Awesome. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I've never known anybody in all my years to have an ammonia accident. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so you just hit on something else too that kind of prompted me to, to ask this: um, What is the story with? The, the label designs and, and the logo, because I mean, it's all just so badass. I mean, if you sold t shirts with your label, I would own every single one. They're yeah, just all sure. really cool. Seriously, yeah, I'm, I'm a t shirt um, more. You know, that's the first time anybody's ever asked me that question. I like that. Thank you for, for thinking of that. Um, uh, well, the, 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 the go to Skull Smash um, logo, it's, you know, tattooed here on my arm. Um, nice. You know, skull smash. So I had to have a skull, and I and I had to have something smashing it. There's obviously an infinite amount of bludgeoning objects that would work well, and I just, for the first time, changed one on the Blood Eagle to put axes because that's Viking, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, right. So I chose bats. Um, uh, man, it's really cool because I've never talked about this. It's just purely an esoteric, symbolic thing that just resonated with me. It's like a little private thing. Yeah. Was, I'm real big on American. It's American made. There's yeah. nothing outsourced. All my shit yep. is made by two or three people. Hard work, labor. My my phone number's on the bottle. You can call me. Yada yada yada. And what what more of a bludgeoning object? That good old America's favorite pastime: baseball bats. Yeah. Uh, so it, it, it was a, it was just an unattended to be known by the just a private sort of feel good thing for me that that rep sense the american thing it, it gets really corny and overdone and i'm you know and i love my country and i'm a patriot through and through yep. but you put an american flag on every damn thing it starts to work so this was just meant to be a symbol of this yeah. is an american made thing put baseball bats in it because that's what we do that's yeah. awesome well, man it is it is super cool and i'm wondering do you have the same person designing all your label for the the bottles oh uh, no most of them actually the, the guy that that did this one and a lot of them um, his name's Ahmed. Um, he's my ta he's one he's my he's been my tattooer for the last several years, and he'll probably okay. be my my last one. So um, I like the tattoo kind of fifty style rock and roll, yeah, pin up style thing. It's just old school badass, you know, kind yeah. of. Yeah. And so you know, who better to get to do that than a tattoo artist? So sure. Um, so he's done a lot of them. Uh, the Blood Eagle is the first, and, and my ex-wife, who's a, a, an awesome woman, and a, she's a graphic designer by trade. Okay. Um, so, you know, I mean, she's my ex-wife, so I can't call on her for a million things, but she had a lot to do with cold cocked. I was like, okay. to change. I said, I don't want the logo to change in design, but I just want it to be look like it's like it's frozen and covered in snow. And so she did that one for me on my mm -hmm. art direction. Um a lot, you know, a lot of it is all my my design in my head, but you know I got to have more talented people that actually do the graphics. And then Ahmed, when I reached out to him for Blood Eagle, he he sort of uh, fired me, um, not in a bad way. I mean, no, 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 no. Really, he's like he's moving away from illustration and the graphic, the um, computer side, and he's he's focusing more on his tattoo work and fine art. And so the lady that he put me in touch with, he goes, Bro brother, I love you. I'm not going to put you in touch with anybody that I don't think is better than I can be for you for your project. So he put me in touch with a uh, lady named Kelly who worked in one of his tattoo studios. And okay. she's a graphic designer and works for a place. And their their style of art and what they focus on is right up my alley. They, they, did, Blood, they did Blood Eagle in less than a month off of just a couple of renditions of my uh, wow. I couldn't be more happy to have them, and, and they were on. They they put me. Um, they were put in touch with me by Ahmed. So I do all the art direction and, and come up with the concepts, communicate yep. with them, and we go back and forth. And I just had a meeting with a phone meeting with her today about what to do with my uh, coffee labels. Well, awesome. again, 
They're super cool. I can't say enough about how much. I mean, I just I have an appreciation for design, and I'm not even kidding. If you made T-shirts with those label designs, I would buy every single. Yep, same. Yep, right. for sure. They're that cool, man. I really you need to get on that, bro. Appreciate that. Get on that, bro, because you got you got some big. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm I'm in the same boat. I'd have them all for sure. Just make sure you make three XL for us because we're fat. Oh yeah. I'm, um, I'm appealing to meatheads. I always got to make three XL. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we typically try to keep these episodes to 30 minutes, but man, we're at over 45. It's been such a great conversation. Um, cannot thank you enough for being on the show. For again, sponsoring my competition in October. Just really, really happy that we're able to do this, man. So thank you very much, and best of luck with everything. The honor's all mine. Thanks for including me and thanking enough of me to put me on your show. I really appreciate. You're it. welcome. Absolutely. Steve, again, thanks for being here and, and thank you for your service. You as well, uh, sir. You yeah, as well. Absolutely. We'll uh, have you back and look forward to having you back. Anytime, man. I'm here for anything you guys need. All right. Yes, take care. Yep, thank see you, you guys. Appreciate it.